Hello friends, welcome to my studio and welcome to a new video. Today I wanted to do something that I really like watching on other artist channels because I'm always curious what are the essential supplies for artists that use different types of art mediums and also work in different styles and what do they take with them on the go whenever they have limited space so like what are the few things that they always bring with them so pretty much like what's in my pencil case or what's in my travel bag kind of videos and today I was just about to unpack my travel bag because we just returned from a little family getaway and I took some supplies with me to sketch while there and um, um, I didn't have much time but I still managed to do one still life and I was thinking why not unpack it together so I can show you what I usually bring with me so let's begin so first of all I want to talk a little bit about the bag so this one is by Archer and Olive and I got it this fall this was a little present um, from me to me for my birthday um, I would just really wanted to get something that is nice looking but also has a lot of room in there and something that has a lot of pockets and compartments um, but I also have another one which is actually a cosmetic bag it's slightly smaller than this one it's probably not shown on camera but it is a little bit smaller so whenever I'm really short on room in my backpack because my backpack is also not that big um, so whenever I'm saving some room I usually size down and to be honest I can size down to even smaller than this but this is just kind of the size that I usually go for and comes with one large zipper compartment that opens all the way down so you can easily access all of the supplies this is not sponsored by the way I purchased this with my own money so I'm not promoting anything in this video and on the inside it has quite a lot of room and it has another smaller insert and I'm gonna move the rest of the bag to the side for now and I'll just open this so this one actually oops um, this one actually attaches on the inside to the back I just have it so packed that I couldn't clip it in but it also has clip side on the inside here and this one I like for some extra pencil storage so these are my um, Durban drawing pencils and we can swatch a couple of colors together so um, these are actually all of the Derwent pencils that I own um, I don't buy huge sets because I like to go for the colors that I know I'm gonna be using and the ones that sort of fit my palette so I have sort of a muted warm yellow and this one um, this one is yellow ochre um, I have a little darker kind of a sand color this is brown ochre I like this color too this is um, light sienna it's nice for some subtle highlights Um, next one is Mars Orange. This is also a very beautiful color, Mars Violet. So as you can see, I kind of tend, go, tend to go for the warmer colors. Um, this one is Ruby Earth. This one is Crag Green. Olive Earth. 
and the two blues that I have I also like to have them on a warmer side so this one is smoke blue it's also beautiful for cooler highlights and this one is ink blue and I also have a white one and I like these pencils because they easily go over other pencils like Prismacolor or Luminous um, the Caran d'Ache ones I also have some Prismacolor color race pencils for sketching um, I like to use blue ones and a red one and I think I should have red somewhere in there yeah so this is a red one and I like the Prismacolor colorized pencils because they can easily be erased and they are nice to sketch with I also bring with me my two pan pastels um, and these are the only two colors that I have and pretty much the only two that I need for now um, I use them for either cooling down some colors or warming them up if I'm applying them over something that I already have on my uh, paper or I also use these for backgrounds like whenever I need to add a little bit of the texture for the background without having um, something heavy to put down or without adding too much color because these are actually pretty soft um, when you add them to the paper and I have uh, two extra makeup wedges that um, I like to use because the original ones that are sold for pastels um, they're nice but they're actually quite expensive and this color is actually doesn't even show on the camera as well because of how soft it is let me see if I can turn it down a little bit oh, maybe it gets better and a yellow one So these stay inside um, of this main insert and I also keep the wedges in there in the pocket here and I did a big mistake once when I overloaded this inside pocket and then it just ripped so that's why you see there's a little bit of the duct tape holding it together. Um, I also have two of my Luminance Karen Dash pencils. I'm gonna swatch them with the rest of them because I have the rest of those pencils um, in the back But here I also have my ink pens and some extra graphite pencils So I will unload the rest of this pocket here Oh and a sharpener So this is what the insert looks like you can actually just fill this up and take just this if you don't need too much stuff that's why I like it um, so I have my washi tape whenever I need to sketch something because um, I like to have clean borders especially if I'm doing watercolors or gouache um, I take a small ruler with me I don't really use it much but sometimes it does come in handy so the ink pens that I take with me are pretty standard um, and you see me using these a lot my most favorite one is the hybrid Technicum 0 0.3 um, this one is waterproof when it's completely dry so if you want to paint over this one you need to let it dry for um, at least a few hours but I like to do it overnight um, I also have the Stedler pigment liner um, this one I believe is waterproof um, uh, yeah waterproof on paper this one is 
and another small one I have um, is Pilot High Tech C um, and this one is 03. So these three are pretty much the same. There's not much difference, um, but I kind of take them just in case something happens to one of them. There's also one more that I take with me um, that for some reason I forgot this time. I think I just couldn't find it when I was packing up to leave. So let me see if I can find it now. So this is the one I usually bring with me as well. Um, I was just using it a couple days before and I left it on my desk and then I forgot that it wasn't in my bag. So this one is a Pentel and I don't have a bag for me but I'm gonna try to find the exact link for it. And it has one brush side that comes to a very nice tip and this is a felt brush so it's not as flexible but for me it makes it easier to control it on the paper and the other side has a pointy side which still kind of gives you a little bit of variety as well and i also bring with me two brush pans one is um, these bows are Printel, but this one i believe is um, dark gray or something like this because I don't remember the exact name of the color I'm gonna try to find it but this one is not as dark it's sort of a medium to dark kind of gray which is great for mid-tones and the other one has a black pigment and these have bristle brushes so these are now more flexible um, also cover a larger area if I need it and I use these a lot I also have the same ones at home on my desk at all times and these pretty much live in my pencil case I also bring with me a couple of the graphite pencils these are my favorite ones the HB and 3B which are pretty versatile and you can see how tiny one is getting the 3B one I also have a couple of mechanic pencils I'm going to show in a minute. I also take with me the new um, graphite pencil, but I don't think this is really graphite. So this is a General's 9XXB pencil that, um, was, that was sold as a graphite and you can see in one of my recent art hauls. But this one actually looks almost like charcoal it just doesn't have that rock texture of a charcoal and this one is sort of just like the blackest black that you can get out of a pencil and it's still easy to create a lot of light textures as well which is why i like to bring it with me because you can make a whole drawing with a wide tonal range with just this one pencil um, and I also have just a couple of pens for writing and leaving notes in my notebook um, if I need to write something down. So one is, these are Stedler and one is green and one is kind of like an ochre color. And these kind of come and go. I sometimes pick different colors and throw different colors in there. So these are not really a necessity, but I still like to have something interesting to write with. All right, so this was all that usually fits inside of this insert and I'm just gonna throw everything back quickly. Usually I don't even unpack this bag because I want to have it ready for whenever I feel like going and sketching outside. So just so I don't waste too much time packing everything and I like to leave this on my desk so whenever I am drawing at home and I need these supplies I just open it up and it's easy and ready for me to access and also it keeps everything very organized all right now in um, the big compartment here what I have is the rest of my pencils um, I have also a viewfinder that I like to take with me when I'm sketching outside 
this helps to frame my composition and to kind of narrow down the things that I want to sketch whenever I feel overwhelmed by everything that's going on outside. And this little hole inside is um, very useful when you're trying to isolate the color that you're trying to sketch or paint. So when you're looking some, on something, um, a lot of the times the color that you see is actually affected by the colors nearby. So that might change your perception of that color. So if you want to isolate it, you look at it through a little hole and this is just kind of a medium gray color. So you can make this something even for yourself out of the regular cardboard. Just paint it a neutral color and make a hole on the inside. And then when you look at a certain color through this hole, it's easier to see the color for what it really is rather than what you think it is. So this thing always stays with me in there. Um, I also have my travel watercolor palette that I've put together out of my kind of a neutral tone watercolors. Um, and in here I have some white, um, which is not a gouache, this is a Chinese white watercolor. I have Naples yellow, powdery pink, Indian red, alizarin crimson, Van Dyke brown, lavender, Davis gray, terra verde, olive green, Prussian green, Antwerp blue, indigo, and perlin green. So this is like my landscape palette. You can see I have a lot of the greens and I have some blues that are not the ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, something that doesn't really need to be toned down and something I can use straight out of the pan here. And I also have some subtle reds. Um, I like Na Naples yellow for the sunset colors. So it's also something that doesn't need to be toned down. And also Naples yellow um, doesn't really make a very obvious green whenever you have it on the edge with the blue. For example, you're making the sunset sky. So you're adding some yellow just like around the horizon line and then some blue at the top. You're not gonna risk mixing um, a very vibrant green in there. It still might mix a little bit, but it's not gonna be as poppy because Naples yellow is more neutral. So yeah, these are the colors that um, I don't use as much on a regular basis at home, but I really like to work with this palette whenever I'm working outside. And it's a small palette and it fits nicely in the bag there. So with this palette, I like to use water brushes just because these are easier to work with outside. Um, and I have um, I have a size, I think this is medium and this is small. I purchased a pack of three, large, medium and small. Um, and I usually tend to go for just these two. I feel like that is enough. And it's easy to fill them up at home and not having to carry extra water with me. So these are great for um, sketching at home as well, but I mostly use these for the outside. I also have two, um, no, I think three, yeah. I have three Ecoline brush markers. And these are in colors beige, apricot, and cold gray. So I like to use beige for warmer tones. Even though it's a little greenish. Um, but when you put it next to this cold gray, then that beige looks more like a warmer tone. Um, rather than a greenish tone and it's nice to put some of the color on the paper whenever you're working with darker tones so that you can just overlay it with um, pencils and it's easier to get color down faster. And also one is apricot. I just really like this one for a pop of color and I was gonna do still life because still life is our theme for my Patreon sketching club. Um, so I brought this one to maybe like put it down as a base color for some fruits and usually I take just these two 
um, beige and cold gray and I might sometimes throw in a couple extra just for a pop of color. All right, now on the bottom there, I have the rest of my color pencils. So I've been really into the color pencils um, lately, and these are some of my new one from Luminance. I also have the two other ones that were on the inside. And I have a Prismacolor in, mixed in, in there as well. And we can sketch these two. I will just separate them. Um, so from the Prismacolor, I take just a couple um, of different tones. I don't like to carry around Prismacolor pencils because they break very easily and then it's really hard to sharpen them because they're just gonna continue to break. But um, I didn't I want to go for a lot of the luminance colors at first. I want to see how they feel. So I purchased kind of a limited palette. So I kind of filled up the rest of the colors with the Prism Prisma colors that I already had. So with this one, I take some neutral grays um, that are also great for tonal sketches and for filling up some areas quickly um, and again these are kind of like the colors that I pick out depending on what I feel like sketching so I knew I was gonna do still life so I got some neutral ones as well as some greens and blues and oranges and yellow so these are the prism colors that I carry with me and the rest are the luminance colors and I really enjoy their coverage that they have they are easier they're easier for me to use than um, Prisma colors for some reason because they just cover area more evenly and with Prisma colors sometimes you just have to really work them and force them to get the real color out of them, the intense color. So again, a lot of warm tones and more kind of a neutral tones. I am enjoying a lot of earthy colors. I feel like they are pretty versatile in terms of what you can do with them. So my greens are um, usually just a couple of bright, uh, really warm ones, then a couple of neutral ones. And I usually throw in like one the turquoise or uh, like a really cool green for cooler shadows. And uh, the blues ones are usually the ones that I can't get enough of. So I take all of the, pretty much the whole range of blues with me. I've been really enjoying um, this intense blue color and this one is Fela Blue. Yeah, that's right. And I also have two dark ones. This one is Dark Indigo, which is almost, oh, you can see it which is almost like black, but it's more of a, on the cooler side. And one is um, Castle Earth, um, which is like a dark raw umber. And I noticed that for some reason, this one um, is a little bit more chalky. You can see like a lot of this small residue falling off, like all this little dust coming off of it. Um, I guess it depends on the pigment, but I still like it. And I also have the titanium buff. Um, sometimes I bring with me some toned paper in my sketchbook, 
Um, I mean, it's really hard to see it on the white paper, but on a toned paper, it looks very nice. Yeah, so um, these are all of the colors that I bring with me. I don't use a lot of the pinks and bright reds or purples. Um, I just usually just throw in a couple of earthy colors in there. And this is pretty much the whole palette. The sketchbook that I take with me is my current sketchbook. And it just always depends on whatever um, I'm working on. So if I'm more into watercolor phase, I'll bring a watercolor sketchbook with me. This one has just the usual sketchbook paper. This one is the Art Creation by Talents. Um, it's 94 pounds, which is not very heavy weight, but it still takes some watercolor. It's not completely useless in that sense. And um, inks look really good on it, as well as um, this was actually the General's Extra Dark Pencil, as you can see, so you can get a lot of nice range of colors there, but um, yeah, this is the still life that I did while I was away. The picture is actually um, the photo prompt for my Patreon sketchbook lab, so I was um, sketching from my iPad, but whenever I go outside, I still like to bring something with a stiffer cover so I can open it up and I can just lay it on my lap and um, not have to struggle with the paper bending under me and not being able to sketch. So I would sometimes open on one side and lay out my supplies on the other side. So yeah, I like all of my sketchbooks to be pretty sturdy. And what else is left in our bag? Oh, I have some post-it notes also for some extra notes. Um, and here... Um, I have some of my most used pencils and erasers. So this one is 05. It's a Pentel Mechanic Pencils, but I put in there actually a dark blue lead because I like to sketch with blue. Um, this is the Mono Eraser. And this one is a very tiny 0.2 Mechanic Pencils whenever I'm going for very light details and very light sketches. Um, and what else is in there? Oh, I have my aromatherapy. Um, this one is um, this one is called Focus, and I don't know if it says what oils are exactly in there, but I really like the smell and I really like the effect of it. And, and this one is a roller, so it's easy to apply on the go have it with you. It's something that I use in my studio a lot as well, but I have a spray in the studio where I mix my own um, oils and spray them around for a little bit of inspiration. Um, this was the card that actually came with the Arch and Olive bag and I just really like what it says on the inside, a very lovely message. Um, it says, this bag is more than a bag. It is a loyal companion. Take it with you everywhere. It's safe space for all of your hopes and dreams. The keeper of all your essentials. It is an ally. And yeah, the rest of it, yeah, pretty nice. So I just kind of keep it in there. Um, I also have a couple of clips whenever I need to clip my paper. And especially when it's windy, I usually clip it together so it doesn't fly off as easy. And here I have my erasers. Oh, I also have a couple of eyeshadow applicators that I use with my pan pastels. And these are also very small and easy to take with me because a lot of the pastel applicators, they come with really long handles and I don't like that. I find these to be easier to take around with you. Um, and the rest of it there is just my, oh, there's some more washi tape, um, a brand new wrapped eraser just in case I need a fresh one, and two erasers and my sharpener. So this is everything that fits in there and pretty much everything that I need. I don't really take more than this because I like to keep it small for sketching outside so that I don't feel 
overwhelmed by the amount of supplies that I bring with me and then kind of feeling stuck with the decisions um, on what to use and what effects to go for because everything outside is already feeling quite overwhelming so you don't really need to add more to that stress. And also I like to pack light um, so I don't have to carry any heavy stuff with me um, because I still have to pack either a water bottle if I'm going outside um, or on the sketchbook itself as well is also quite heavy so um, if I really wanted to size down I know I could uh, it's it's hard to leave a lot of your favorite supplies behind at home um, but yeah this is something that I like to bring with me um, I hope it gave you some ideas for what you can bring outside and if you have your absolute favorite something that is absolutely essential to your practice and all the plein air sketches let me know I would like to try it out as well so I hope you enjoyed this video um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already give it a like and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!